Okay, this is a very brief um, tutorial stroke explanation on how to use tkinter uh, with Python to act as a data entry form um, and validate data. So I'm just going to run through this to demonstrate actually how it works first and then I'll explain the coding aspect of it. So what this gives us is a uh, data entry screen which I've set up some arbitrary uh, data entry points to, to fill in. Um, an age field, surname, uh, a date field, and a, a spinner. We've also got check boxes and radio buttons. You'll notice that when we submit the information, oh, got an error there. I've entered an invalid date. Uh, when we enter the um, information, it gives us some feedback. Uh, if we've entered the information correctly, it tells us the information that we've entered. And if we've created an invalid input it gives us uh, an error message. I can uh, clear that data and then re-input it again. With different answers and submit it. You can see it will accept that data. Okay, why is it not? Oh, I'm entered an invalid date again. There we go. Okay, so if we don't end, if we clear the data and we enter nothing, then we'll get invalid inputs for the fields with required data, um, and it will assume that because we haven't checked anything um, from these boxes, uh, that those uh, are going to be uh, left blank. Okay. So how does this actually work? So if we go and actually have a look at the code, the first bit of the code is the um, actually setting up the form. So if we look at this part here, well, this is the label, input age, and these two lines of code define that. So we, we, we set up a variable to store the information, and we call that a label and we just say what the text is. So I can change that to enter age and you can see that when I run the program it changes the label to enter age. And the second part of the code, this bit here, uh, defines the data entry box okay so in this case I've called it entry age and the widget is called entry and I've, I've, the, the whole window is called window dict by the way so that's just the name for my window um, width is two characters and the background is light green and these are all user definable fields so if I wanted to change that to blue and change the width to four characters then I can do that Okay. I'll set that back. Um, and that's essentially repeated. So we've also got another line of code for the label and the boxes, which def which which determine what row, what column they they go into. Um, and I think this means that they're aligned uh, left in that particular uh, column. So I've got the first. I've got the labels are in row zero and. Uh, so all the labels are in column zero, I think. Yes, they are. Yeah, all the labels are in column zero, and all the entries are in column one. And that's basically what they are. We can split those up into like kind of the four, whoops, sections uh, with the the label that the user sees to give them guidance on what to enter and then the actual entry box that they fill in. So we just deal with these 
uh, text entry uh, boxes to begin with. That defines what they are. Let's run it again. So that kind of covers this kind of bit up here, these first three fields. Okay. Um, and then we look at the the uh, spinner field, which is this one here. So we have to uh, define a variable to, to store the information, which in this case I've called v. v equals int there. And, and again, we have a label, which is what the user sees. It's exactly the same as with the other things. And we also have a, a grid position to store that label. So that respect it's identical to the other labels and it's slightly different when we um, have the actual spin box itself this defines the actual spin box and at the moment I've got that set between values 1 to 12 but I can actually change that I can redefine that those values from 1 to 6 and if we run that you'll see that when I use the spinner I can only now select values between 1 and 6 Okay. Um, then we come to the checkboxes. Now, there's the check. All the checkboxes can have a value of one or zero, so we need a variable to store for each. And again, it's a very similar format to before. And the labels. Um, that's that's like the overall label that applies to all of the uh, checkboxes. And these are the individual uh, labels for each checkbox, and they each have their own um, value. And if it's if it's left blank, its value is zero, and if it's filled in, the value is one. Once again, we've got the grid position for each of those, and we've got a uh, that actually defines the the actual checkbox. So if I wanted to uh, change the Value of the checkbox to um, uh, uh, Sega. We'll see that the value of the checkbox is, is changed there. And finally, we've got the radio buttons, and the radio buttons are set up exactly the same as the checkboxes, except we only need to store one variable for the checkboxes because with the checkbox you can uh, with the checkbox you can have one ticked or non all ticked or non ticked but with the radio button you have at least one ticked and the commands are slightly different but in very very similar format okay and we assign um, radio button variables It'd be one two or three depending on which buttons press so if you had, wanted to add more buttons you need just basic or more options. You just copy and paste those two lines of code, um, rename them so these values are different, and a different text value. And you set this value here to, to four. And then finally, we've got the uh, submit button, submit and clear button. Submit button uh, is another widget. Again, we set it up in a very similar way. This the command get data refers to the function which which gets the data from the form which we'll talk about in the second part of this video and the clear button which runs another function uh, procedure I should say which um, resets the value so it's worth just having a quick look at this if you want to clear a um, an output area. The output area is defined as output. The command is dot delete. If you want to clear input boxes, we use the same command. The format slightly different. But if you want to clear check boxes and radio buttons, we just set the uh, the variables to to zero, and that effectively uh, clears them. Okay, so just to recap then, that would enable you then to set up. Um, various form fields of different sizes um, to enable you to collect data. Okay, but at this stage, what we're not doing is we're not 
actually getting the data off the form into a computer program to use it. So that's the, the next part. So the the basic command to to do that very very simply what you would do is you would get to get data from the form you would just uh, literally say that the variable name for that data um, in this case it's an integer variable we just we just use the variable name that we use for the data entry in which case entry age and use the command dot get open close speech marks um, and all the rest of this stuff is just a standard try catch data validation so what this actually does is it prevents the user from entering a null value uh, or um, it prevents them from uh, entering uh, a value that's uh, outside of the acceptable range if you choose to do that so in this case if the we're using try accept so if the user inputs a uh, an invalid uh, character, in other words, a, a non-numerical value into that field, then this will ca catch it and it will uh, send uh, an error message. Um, otherwise, it will it will send uh, it will just tell the user that they've entered a value. We can see that in operation. If I enter a, a a non numeric value and then submit that data, it, it gives us uh, an invalid input. And as you'll see, the fields at the moment are all giving us errors because they're all they've all got some form form of validation. So while we have got data validation um, in some respect on the form, the, the main data validation is, is actually happening in the code. So in the same way, I've got uh, this code here. In this case, the exception is an unbound local error. In other words, there's no data has been entered into the field. And it will give us um, a, a, an error message. Um, and the date validation, you, you probably want to brush up on using date validation, but essentially this takes the information from the form and puts it into the date um, format and then it just checks to see whether it's a valid date and if it's not a valid date it will give uh, an error message. Um, the One of the things that might occur in the computer program is that the user might be able to look at the spinner data and then um, avoid entering information into that field by leaving it, leaving it blank or again by entering in a non-numeric variable. variable. Uh, we should have just deleted. Okay, and it will say that it will actually give us uh, a validation message. Um, and that's uh, actually a, a, a TCL error. So our exception is there's a TCL error, in other words, that the spinner um, gets a value that it's not expecting, uh, that's out of its range, and in that exception, we, we just print uh, an error message. I've also got, if, it's, if it is a valid number, what we do is we just do a little if statement to catch uh, any data inputs that are outside of the uh, expected values. And I think that's it. Yeah, I want to set that back to 12 because that's what my data, uh, that's what my messages say. Um, there's no need to do error catching on the uh, checkbox data because it's only possible to do ticks uh, or, or fill them in. So all I need to do there is just uh, capture that data um, and the at the end, what I've done is for each for each statement, for each uh, attempt to, to get data from the form, there'll be some kind of message generated, which will either be a message saying that you've successfully inputted the data, or a message saying that there's some kind of valid input. And at the end of that uh, at the end of that procedure, it will print uh, an output message, which will just 
concatenate all those together and display it. Now, if you were wanted to uh, return data from from this you know, to pass into another part of the program, then that's where your return function, uh, your return command would be. So I'll just demonstrate that one more. So we will first of all put in, uh, we'll, we'll deliberately put in invalid data in all the fields. You'll see we get a message, a relevant message in each field. Um, whereas with the these fields, it doesn't generate any data because we could, they might be blank. And if we fill it in, I fill it in correctly with valid data. You'll see that it returns that. And then, of course, if I want to, then I can clear that data and re -input. So uh, that is the end of that little video. If you want access to this particular file, uh, this will be, uh, it's called GUI form fields. I'll make sure that that is saved in uh, an appropriate area so you can locate it. If anybody wants a copy of that file, please just drop me an email and I will send it to you. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this useful.